Hi, I'm Mike Tortorella with Respiratory Marketing. While the Real Inhalers campaign was designed to increase HCP awareness of patients' struggle with suboptimal peak inspiratory flow, or PIF, there's real-world evidence further enhances that emotional connection with new, powerful data. Let's look at four key takeaways from various subgroup analyses. One, 61% of PIF assessments from patients using low to medium high resistance inhalers showed suboptimal PIF on admissions to the hospital. Two, 37% of suboptimal PIF assessments were among patients with moderate COPD in a subgroup analysis of patients with spirometry data available. Third, 53% of PIF assessments from discus and ellipta users showed suboptimal PIF. And finally, fourth, for patients readmitted to the hospital for any cause, 65% of PIF assessments for patients using low to medium high resistance inhalers showed suboptimal PIF. This data can bring the real inhaler story to life with real evidence from a large retrospective study. Let's look at how you can incorporate this exciting new data into your sales calls. Doctor, last time I was here, we discussed that there is a COPD paradox. Many patients with COPD cannot forcefully inhale because they live with damaged lungs. Yet, all dry powder inhalers, or DPIs, require patients to forcefully inhale to optimally activate. Over 1,100 patients with COPD were admitted to a hospital, and 835 patients met the inclusion criteria in the first large-scale, real-world, retrospective study of PIF. 61% of PIF assessments in a subgroup analysis of patients using low to medium high resistance DPIs showed suboptimal PIF. It may be surprising to you, a share of suboptimal PIF assessments were found among patients with moderate COPD. In fact, over one third, or 37%, of suboptimal PIF assessments were among patients with moderate COPD in a subgroup analysis where data for spirometry was available. Doctor, you've shared with me in the past that Elipta is your most commonly prescribed DPI. Is that correct? Yes, I don't hear any complaints when I prescribe a medication delivered via an Elipta inhaler. In that case, you might be interested in seeing this data that shows suboptimal PIF by DPI resistance. According to the evidence in this analysis, 53% of PIF assessments from discus and Elipta users showed suboptimal PIF. And as you can see, it was even more prevalent in other commonly prescribed DPIs. So, how many patients in your practice do you think have suboptimal PIF? I'm not really sure. This is troubling or something I really thought about when placing my patients on a DPI. Lastly, in a subgroup analysis of patients readmitted to the hospital for any reason, suboptimal PIF was found in 65% of assessments for patients using low to medium high resistance inhalers. How do you know your patients can optimally activate a DPI? You bring up a good point about some patients not being able to optimally activate a DPI. I'm not sure how I'd be able to know for certain. Doctor, please remember that a correlation between suboptimal PIF and clinical outcomes has not been established. If you have no additional questions about suboptimal PIF, I would love to shift gears and talk to you about Cialteresponat for your patients with COPD who are symptomatic and maintenance naive. Stealta Respimat is a COPD treatment with inhalability. Inhalability is the ease with which actual patients can inhale their medicine. As you may know, Gold continues to recommend the importance of inhaler choice when assessing your patient's treatment. So doctor, when you are treating a patient with COPD and they are ready for a maintenance medication, are you starting with inhalability in mind? 